All right, so this is going to be a weird one, because today I wanted to talk about Edmonton Oilers forward Jesse Pugliarvi once again, and go over an idea highlighted by Frank Saravelli in a recent Edmonton Oilers roster analysis piece on Daily Faceoff. But before we get into that, I wanted to just explore what exactly the situation has been with Pugliarvi as of late, how he's played the past few games, and what a lot of Oilers fans that I'm seeing have to say about this guy, because it's kind of... You know, it's as weird as it always has been. It's Jesse Pugliarvi playing a certain way, people have their opinions about him, but the on-ice deployment, I guess, is not really reflective of those opinions, nor the people that are watching this product. They're going out there saying a lot of different things compared to what the coach ends up doing, and it's just been a very difficult situation in general, so... Jesse Pugliarvi, as we all kind of know, expiring RFA to be one-year deal, $3 million, he's 24 years old, and he's got 10 points in 48 games played this season. 17 points in 81 games is his projection, and that's a pretty steep decline from what he had last season. We've said the same thing over and over and over again about Pugliarvi and the lack of points, and it gets even worse where you look at his last 10 games where he only has one goal. Now, the thing with Pugliarvi is that even though he might be really bad in terms of just strictly the points, there are a lot of people that would go out there and highlight Pugliarvi's individual game the past little while as being pretty good. While he isn't producing necessarily, what Pugliarvi has been doing this past little while is putting himself in a position to make the Oilers around him just a tad better. And sometimes it results in goals, like for example, when Pugliarvi was playing off against the Blue Jackets the other day, he disrupts a Blue Jacket turnover in the neutral zone, he kind of fights for the puck, and then it gets centered out to Derek Ryan, who comes in, he shoots, and he scores. Now, Pugliarvi was not given an assist for this play, but he pretty much was the reason the puck even found its way onto Derek Ryan's stick in the first place, bearing the Blue Jacket's second turnover on the play. Furthermore, you have the increased physicality that we've started to see a little bit earlier in that same Columbus game. He ended up dishing out a hit to Gustav Nyquist, and Nyquist was visibly shaken up after the hit. Earlier today, it was announced that Nyquist is going to be out indefinitely with an injury. So, Jesse Pugliarvi is literally the reason why Gustav Nyquist is going to be out for a while. That ends up helping out the Blue Jackets with their tanking situation, I think. But either way, Pugliarvi has been in such a polarizing state amongst Oilers fans, and speculation is still running rampant as to what could be the case here with Pugliarvi and his future. With this in mind, let's go over to DailyFaceOff.com and look at the 2023 NHL trade deadline playbook for the Oilers, published by Frank Saravelli two days ago. Now, there's an entire write-up about the team, the cap, and everything. It's a pretty good article, I feel, just talking about a whole bunch of different things with the Oilers. But when it comes to the conversations regarding Jesse Pugliarvi, it's towards the end of the piece. It talks about a whole bunch of guys the Oilers could bring in, like Taves and Ryan O'Reilly and whatever, but then at the end it says this... And just for fun, if all else fails, would swapping Jesse Pugliarvi to the Florida Panthers in exchange for Anthony Duclair make sense for both sides? They both have the same cap hit. Just saying. Now, Sarah Bailey is not going out there and saying, oh, this is going to happen, whatever. It just says, what if? It's only saying, okay, I mean, could it make sense? They're making the same amount of money. And this is where I think things become a little bit interesting, because when you talk about this idea, Anthony Duclair is a guy who I think really fits the bill as to what Oilers hockey could benefit from, just in theory. I don't want to make it seem like, oh, this is the type of guy that the Oilers would actually, like, want per se, but for Duclair, he's a really speedy, offensively capable winger who's been just a lot better than Pugliarvi has been in terms of overall production. This season, he has not been playing. He'll be coming back soon. But last season, the guy had 58 points in 74 games played. Now, he's making only $3 million. So if you assume that his Achilles tendon surgery, which happened back in July, heals up properly, which... You know, it takes a while, but he's already been skating for a bit, so hopefully it transpires that way. But if you believe with 110% certainty that Duclair is going to be back, then this sort of a move makes a lot of sense, in my opinion at least, from the perspective of the Oilers. If this gets done, and Duclair is as good as he had been before, then you're no longer struggling to find the final piece in your top six. You have McDavid, Nuge, Dreisaitl. Okay, that's a pretty good... One, two, three, and then you have Hyman, Kane, and Duclair. 
Seems pretty good to me, man. Plus, if the Florida Panthers are going to be sellers anytime soon, then this makes even more sense to go out there and think about. So, Duclair is a guy that I think would fit the bill, but, of course, there are some negatives to this. Firstly, he is, assuming you're going to go out there and evaluate him in the way that he was last year, going to take a little bit more than just Jesse Pogliarvi to pry him away from the Panthers. If the Panthers want to sort of explore a little bit of a retool on the fly-ish, then they're probably going to get some significant value back aside from just Pogliarvi. I mean, sure, change of scenery could really help him out, and playing with Barkov, another Finn, could probably help him out as well, but yes, he pulled the RV for Duclair one for one, even with the Duclair injury situation, is not something that I think is all too equal in the slightest. Next up, you have yourselves the plan itself. You really need to make sure that his Achilles tendon surgery is properly healed from before you evaluate some sort of a trade. You need to make sure that he is going to be okay. If you end up trading away Pugliarvi and Duclair, even though he is signed until 2024, so he still has a season after this, is not able to come over to your squad right away, let's say he sits out until, let's say, the second or third round, then... This really isn't a move that you capitalize all too much from, and you really have to hope that he's able to get his legs under him right away. If you're in a position where he plays, let's say, in February, the middle of February, or sometime around the trade deadline, then all of a sudden, okay, he's got a little bit of time to get back up to speed, hopefully get back up to that 50-point pace that he was at last season. I mean, 58 divided by 74, multiplied out by 82. Let's do the full math on that season that he had. He was on pace for 62 total points, which would have been really good, plus the 30 goals that he had had as well. Honestly, it's pretty nice seeing Duclair mold himself into the player that he is today, especially after all those years bouncing around in Columbus and everything, where he wasn't really all too great. Those Arizona seasons where he declined after being pretty all right. He was a part of the Rangers as well. Duclair's been kind of everywhere, and it wasn't really until the Panthers in 2021 and 2022 where he actually saw some playoff rounds. All the prior years, he bounced around between teams that didn't make the dance, and so... This may be a nice opportunity for a guy like Anthony Duclair to really bolster that part of his career. So if you're an Oilers fan, thoughts in the comment section below. What are your opinions about Anthony Duclair and whether or not he is the guy that should be coming over in exchange for Pugliarvi? Do you think this is a good enough move to consider? Frank Saravelli threw it out there, and I did see some people going out there and, like, repeating it on different parts of social media, but... You know, it's just Sarah Vailey going out there and spitballing, so if you like this idea, let me know in the comments all your thoughts about it. Do you think Duclair could be the final piece that the Oilers could use? Are you concerned about the injury and everything that happened with Duclair ever since July? The fact that he is recovering, the fact that he is slowly, hopefully, getting back up to form. Does that in any way deter you from making a trade for this guy? And if so, by how much does it do that? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below if you're a Florida Panthers fan as well. What are your opinions about Pugliarvi being the guy coming back? Do you think this is an actually worthwhile type of a move for you guys? Do you think you could bolster his career up with a new Finnish connection and a rejuvenation of his overall playing style? Style. Thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this Vishraj Troll 9 and bye. <laughs>